It's always Nick Kiprios, man. Leave it to Kipper to go out there in the Toronto Star and stir up the pot with conversations on trades, rumors, and players that the Toronto Maple Leafs could go out there and potentially acquire. Today, we're focusing on defense because it's always about defense when it comes to the Maple Leafs. With Muzzin, Riley, Brody, Ben, it makes for an easy conversation every week, pretty much. But today, we're not going over the big fish that is on the market in Jacob Chitrin because that is a drum we have beaten before. Instead, we're going over onto an article published by Nick Kiprios on The Star about a few other options the Maple Leafs could consider when it comes to their defenseman trading situation. This article was published back on the 24th, and it says with Riley out, the Maple Leafs would be wise to do some early Christmas window shopping. Who is worth a trade call? Let's scroll down past the entire spiel about Connor Timmins and Sandine, the players that are in the system, and then Jacob Chitrin as well. Here are a few other players that would fit the bill in the eyes of Nick Kiprios. I only really wanted to focus on the first one right here. Dante Fabro in Nashville. He's a name many aren't talking about. The 24-year-old still has plenty of upside at both ends of the ice, and he will be a restricted free agent at the end of the season. Word is Nashville GM Dave Poyle wants to move a defenseman and is willing to part ways with the right-handed shot at the right price. This one could cost Dubas, prospect winger Matthew Nyes. Now, I didn't think that this early on into Dante Fabro's career, we would be starting up trade rumors or hearing them at least about how Fabro apparently is okay to being shopped by the Nashville Predators. Just for the news flash for anybody that's unaware, Dante Fabro is a 24-year-old right-handed defenseman, 6 feet, 190 pounds taken, 17th overall back in 2016. He was a guy that was initially one of the better players we had seen in the BCHL. This is Junior A Hockey in British Columbia and playing for the Penticton Vs. He was over a point per game. He was crazy good. And I feel like a lot of people in this province kind of remember just the hype for a lot of the guys that were in this league in the past. So Newhook, Kent Johnson, of course, Fabro, you have Tyson Jost, etc., etc. Fabro afterwards went to the Boston University system in the NCAA, where as the captain of the Terriers in 2018-19, he was a point per game guy. Afterwards, he became a full-time Nashville Predator, and he had 24 points in 66 games played last season. A pretty good bet, to be honest. And if you go over to the most recent scouting report for Fabro back from June of 2021, so before the 24-point year that he just had, this is what it says written by Nicholas Kauka. Through a steady sophomore campaign as an everyday NHLer, Fabro logged top minutes on the Nashville Blue Line. His offensive contributions increased, and he appeared to be rounding out into the overall defensive pillar that most people anticipated. Once returning from minor injuries in April, Fabro found himself out of the lineup as the team geared up for the playoffs. With a strong presence of youth in the lineup, one can only speculate on Fabro's situation. Keep a close eye on things as he'll be looking for a new contract coming out of his entry-level deal in the offseason. Now, that contract that he had signed after his entry level was really short, 2.4 AAV till the end of 2023, so it was only two seasons long. And now, as a guy that's apparently on a blue line that is willing to trade away somebody or two, it's really interesting to see where Fabro is going to go. The guy has four points in 19 games, a big drop-off from last season, and he's on pace for 17 total points on the year. This is a guy who I really do think has a lot more to show for himself at the NHL level. Like, if I had to try to label out a ceiling for Dante Fabro of all people, and try to predict what his maximum point output could be on a season, I feel like he's not really the guy that's going to go out there and be a point-per-game superstar, but if he gets 40 to 50 points every year, you're kind of getting what you expected out of this guy, while also getting some very good defensive play in your own zone, too. He was always touted as a mobile two-way defenseman that could put up points and also do well in his own zone, and when it comes to the opportunity, it appears that Right now, Dante Fabro has not been playing his best with the Predators. This is why when you talk about a trade, the Toronto Maple Leafs going out there and capitalizing on a reclamation project like this would kind of be right up their alley. It's just a question as to whether or not you'd want to trade away Matthew Nyes to do so. Now, we already made a video talking about Nyes and the crazy good prospect that he is, but just in case you needed the refresher over here, he's a 2021 second-round pick by the Leafs, 57th overall, 20 years old, 6'3", 
209 as a left-handed left wing. He's a big dude. And he had a stellar season last year for the Gophers, putting up 33 points in 33 games played. He also played for Team USA at the World Juniors and the Olympics, and this season he's kind of carried over that goal-scoring and point-producing touch that he had last year. Not to mention the fact that Nyes is a big physical dude that's not afraid to get under the opponent's skin and just overall wreak havoc on the play with his skills, his scoring ability, and especially that shot of his. There's a lot of good when it comes to the prospect profile that Matthew Nyes has, and as a result, Leafs fans have been super stoked about this guy since, you know, I mean, the Leafs don't have too many top prospects because they trade away all their picks to get players in the now, but Matthew Nyes definitely is not one that you should shove under the rug. If I had to try to label it, I feel like Matthew Nyes could be a bona fide top six player with 50 to 60 point potential, while also just being a physical menace out there. This is a guy that could become really good down the line, and so if the Toronto Maple Leafs are trying to get a defenseman who is young, who is experienced, and who is right-handed like Fabro, then I could understand why Kiprios is throwing Nyes' name out there as a potential trade chip. It's just a question as to whether or not you would do this if you're a Maple Leafs or a Predators fan. Of course, a trade like this from the Toronto point of view is sacrificing the future for the now. You're sacrificing the next few years worth of Matthew Nye's dominance at the NHL level for an immediate short-term option that is going to be an RFA, meaning that you probably have the opportunity and the means to keep him around long-term. It's just not guaranteed yet. And at the same time, is it really worth it to go out there and explore a trade like this when you have a decor that really is just waiting until, I think it's the end of November for Brody, a little bit longer for Ben, and then you have Riley and, of course, Muzzin, who are going to be out for a while. Muzzin, we don't really know if he's going to be coming back, but still, some of these guys are going to be returning soon, within the year, within the next few weeks or months. And so, if that's something that's looming in the back of your mind, what do you do with your decor once you have Dante Fabro and all the guys that are on here right now and the guys that are coming back from injury? Like, I know there are extended opportunities being given out to guys like Mac Hollowell right now, Connor Timmins, Justin Hall, haha, <laughs> cough, cough. Not like he's being given an opportunity per se, but still, there's going to be a lot of flexibility that's going to have to be moved around here for the Maple Leafs to traverse the rest of this season properly with another defenseman that you're going to have to make a trade for. Whether or not this Dante Fabro-like guy is the player to do that, who is going to be coming over to Toronto, let's say he gets a little bit of a bigger role, he maybe gets some more power play time and maybe some more offensive prowess in his repertoire as the year goes on. Who knows what a contract looks like for this guy next season, when he re-signs as an RFA, for example. And if Matthew Nyes becomes like the next Philip Forsberg, for example, for the Nashville Predators, then hey, are you looking at this trade a few years down the line and saying that it was a big L for Toronto? Are you saying that, hey, they needed to really focus on the then and they needed that defenseman, so they traded away Nyes because they didn't really care about what happens in the future? Is that a perspective that kind of reigns true in your mind as well? Talk to the comments your thoughts about this Nick Kiprios trade idea. Also, the link will be in the description if you want to go ahead and read the article. There are a few other names that are tossed in this piece, of course. Vladislav Gavrikov from the Blue Jackets is put in here, and then, of course, Chitrin is talked about because he always seems to be. But I wanted to focus on the Fabro thing because I really do think it's intriguing to talk about Matthew Nyes as a potential return there. If you're a Predators fan, what are your thoughts on Fabro so far? I did notice a significant decline in production, but is that really indicative of how he's actually been playing? I haven't been watching too many Predators games this season, unfortunately, so I'm going to have to turn to you in the comments to help me out over here. Is he really a big step down from what he was last year? He had a lot more points, but is there more than meets the eye than just the goals and assists? Talk in the comments your thoughts whether or not Matthew Nice is a prospect you would like to get in return, and if Fabro in the first place is somebody you'd be willing to give up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Rolls to 99, and bye.